Well, welcome back to another Walk Talk. My name is Rob Greenlee, and I'm in Connecticut again. And I wanted to reflect a little bit on what we saw last night with the presidential election and kind of my thoughts and key takeaways. And I think that the big one is re represented right up here. And that is that the United States of America won last night. And I think that's the key takeaway for me is that we are a divided country on how we want our country to be. And I think that's healthy. And I think our way of governing ourselves and our presence in the world is and should continue to be a, a reflection of ideals that are grounded in this country's world leadership as a democratic a republic that every four years has a reset or causes the residents of this country, the 300 plus million people in this country to think about what they want to be as a country, as a collective. And I think that term collective over the last couple of years is oftentimes are referred to in a negative light, but I think that there's a, another side to it. Yeah, as we look at the freeway down here in Connecticut and in the fall colors, I'm in a park. It's the French Memorial Park in Connecticut. And as we think about where we are as a country and where we are as a people, I think that after the election last night, I think there are at least a third of the U.S. population that, that feels hurt and are uh, a certain amount of kind of distress. And I think that's normal. I think it's natural. That's part of our system and what our founding fathers had envisioned for how this country is supposed to function. And it's not supposed to be easy. And it's not supposed to be without risk. And we do have a constitution that basically really establishes the ground rules of what we are as a country. And there's a reason why the top First Amendment is free speech. And what we saw last night was a reflection of free speech. Now, granted, there are a certain amount of people in this country that are jumping up and down and, and excited because they won last night, because their thoughts and their ideologies were victorious as opposed to others. And I think we all have to kind of just back up and kind of accept the decision that the American people made, that this is a country of the people and for the people. And I think that is how I took it. And I think those values we have to hold on to because this country, the United States of America, is really a country of 300 plus million Americans. And I think it's perfectly healthy for us to argue and debate issues about how we want this country to be. And I think I don't feel any compelling reason to go around and gloat about, I won, you lost, screw you, all this kind of stuff. I don't feel that is the values that I want to represent. And I think it's important that we all kind of think about that and realize that maybe 
other people in this country that maybe didn't agree with the ideologies of, of the conservatives around Donald Trump and have an opinion that maybe they don't like him as a person. But at the end of the day, policies and direction actually won the election. And Donald Trump represented the values that this country as a whole, or at least a third of the country chose to accept as what we want going forward. And so at the end of the day, we are, as I go up in the air, we are all Americans. And I think it's important that we remember that and realize that I think we have a role in the world too, to represent democratic republic values. And I think we, all of us need to tone down the rhetoric, the name calling, the extreme, the extreme name calling, like calling one side a Nazi and the other side calling the other side all sorts of names too, right? So there's a lot of name calling going on. And I think that's all a reflection of values around free speech. And I think one of the biggest threats that we have in this country is threats that are trying to remove the foundations of the Constitution that really sets the ground rules of how we as a country talk to each other. And sure, there's going to be extreme views. And sure, there's going to be people that jump up and down and are excited because they beat someone. But at the end of the day, also, we are a country that is founded in merit and hard work and belief in ideals that are not always easy, right? So we need to really think about these things and root for America, root for, root for your neighbor who maybe voted for the other side. But at the end of the day, we're all Americans. And let's think like that going forward. I'm not gonna go out there and name call against, I mean, I had to choose a, an ideology and a side, but I'm not gonna go out there and name call and say that the other side is wrong. I think they're right from their own perspective and what they want for this country. Now, I do think also to add to this, that one of the biggest threats that we have to our constitution and to all the American people is mainstream media. And I think we all have to really think about that. Is that are we being manipulated by mainstream media? And the other thing that I've seen come up a lot over the last 12 hours is around the influence of podcasting and how podcasting has given authentic discussions and in-depth exploration of ideas and done in a comprehensive way and not these sound bites that are oftentimes used by mainstream media that are contrived and misinterpreted, deceptive, all these kinds of things that create anger and misunderstandings amongst the American people and that are being actively weaponized against us. So my vote, in addition, is that we get back to the foundations of open discussion and debate. And I applaud people like Elon Musk and RFK Jr. for taking a stand about what is right and what is what may be the best thing for Americans. We all want to be healthy. We all want to be able to express ourselves. We all want to be, I think, living in a country that has those free and open discussions and disempowering our government to come in and say, 
sorry, that type of talk is not allowed anymore if it doesn't conform to the government's ideology. So, and those typically be the people that are in power. So my other vote here is that we continue to hold government accountable for them taking sides. What they are is working for us. They have to represent all of us, not a certain ideology that maybe they personally have. If they're going to work for the government, they need to not be partisan. Now, granted, everyone is partisan to some degree, but I think the role of a federal government worker is to not promote and disadvantage Americans based on their own personal ideology or what helps them maintain power. And that is the biggest threat to this country. And so I'm also in support of reducing the size of government and getting the government off of our backs and cutting taxes, cutting our spending, being more efficient with our government. That's been the complaint of the government for decades. And also, we need to get healthier as a country too physically, as well as emotionally. And I realize that there's lots of people today that are very upset. And there's also talk about people having significant mental breakdowns today because of this election. To me, that's a reflection of a problem that's being perpetrated on us by mainstream media. And they need to be held account. They need to be, to step back and realize that maybe they haven't been doing journalism and that they have a role to be a check on the government, not a companion of the government in power, not to be buddy and go to parties and go to events and the government granting access to certain media companies that, that want to align with the ideologies of the government that's in power. This is a collusion, it's corruption, it's all these things, and those need to stop. And so, so I'm not taking sides with anyone that voted for Kamala Harris. I'm not taking sides with anybody that voted for Donald Trump, because I'm not doing this video to reflect a partisan view. I'm doing this video to help others think more completely about what happened last night. This is a, this election of Donald Trump, though you may not like him, many people in this country can see through the cloud that has been portrayed of Donald Trump. Donald Trump is an American. Donald Trump reflects American traditional values and also is a staunch supporter of the Constitution and free speech. He, he does that every day. But I also realize that, that the Democrats have a view as well that is valid from their perspective. And I understand that you're upset. And I understand that, that this didn't turn out the way you had hoped. But let me reassure you, this country is better for what happened last night with the presidential election. Because guess what? The American people won last night, and we won the United States of America back again. Now, granted, I'm sure many of you will think that, well, we never lost America. And that is probably, that, that is true as well. But I do think that there is some things that have been going on that are not congruent with our values as a country. And th there were red flags and things that were going on. Things that were being talked about around government surveillance, censorship, and economic warfare against certain people that didn't align with the values of people in government. 
And so I think that's the biggest threat that we face now, is that now that the Republicans and the, the conservatives have taken power again, or on that path again, that we make sure that we don't continue this dysfunction with uprisings and riots and things like that that are outside of the scope of our constitutional republic, our democratic republic. We need to get foundational and get real with what we are as an American people. And I'm hoping that you will take what I'm saying and really think about it and think about the traditions in this country. It's okay to be a progressive. I'm not saying that it's not. And think about ways that we can get better in the future. And I think a lot of ways we have gotten better. What we have to do now is heal and accept the decision that the American people made last night and to move forward and to realize that there is going to be new things that are going to happen. But I can tell you just from my own research is that what's going to happen is going to be what will likely be viewed in the future as right and just. There have been a lot of people in our government and the political institutions in this country that have taken advantage of their responsibilities for personal gain and for advancing their personal thoughts and their personal agenda and have not been doing things based on the will of the American people. Because that's why they're there, is to do the will of the American people, not to do the will of their own personal ideologies and their desire for maintaining power. So I know I've turned this into a little bit of a rant, but I'm hoping that this did not come across as a partisan video where I'm jumping up and down and excited because one side won, and I am cognizant of there is a side that lost. I played sports for many years. And I always felt bad for the other team that I had beat on the basketball floor. There were games where my team beat another team in basketball 81 to 10. And guess what? I felt horrible after that. I didn't feel like I had done the right thing is to go out and win a game like that because that's embarrassing to the other side. And to some degree, that's what happened last night. Donald Trump is walking away with over 300 delegates, which to me, and it looks like the Republicans are capturing the, the House and the Senate back. And there, there is a clear mandate by the American public that all the things that have been going on, or many of the things that have been going on the last three and a half, four years, need to stop. So thank you so much for watching this. And I am hopeful that today, I realize in, in, in Connecticut today, it was a sun and warm day. It's in the low 80s here today in November, which is a little unusual. But I also know that we're also in a peak solar cycle right now, and that the radiation coming off of the sun is at the highest level it's been in 11 years. So, so it's wonderful to have a beautiful fall in Connecticut here and to have warm weather this late into the fall. And I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I, I hope... If you're upset about what happened last night, that you can kind of put a smile on your face and think that maybe you won as well you, because you're an American. And what happened last night was a victory for America. It may not have been a victory for each one of us, but it was a victory for America. And so I hope you have a, a wonderful rest of your day and don't be upset, be proud that this country made a different choice that likely will be a good choice as well. 
And there's also another election coming up in two years and then a, another one in four years. And we as Americans can make a different choice if what happened over the last, over that four year period of time wasn't aligning with your values. You always have that vote. So have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching my, my walk talk. I know I didn't do a lot of walking today, but I wanted to share this with you and share hope. So thanks. Bye-bye.